I'm going to make a drum sander. Now this all came about a little bit by accident because the project I was going to do was to make a stand, uh, almost like a cupboard if you like, for my dust collector to reclaim a bit of floor space so I could put the bandsaw above it. But I was in my local second-hand tool shop and yes I have a local second-hand tool shop and I found this which is a one horsepower motor, uh, 750 watts, 2800 RPM and not only that I found all the other bits and pieces that I need to go with it to do a drum sander, all the difficult to find items. I have a pair of pillow block bearings, one inch axle. I have a one inch axle, this is alloy, so it should be fairly easy to work with, but it's quite hard. So uh, see how easy that's gonna be. And I found a pulley, again, on a one inch axle. It's nicely a little bit loose, but we can, we can pad that out. And more importantly, the size of this pulley gives me the two to one reduction ratio that I need to get this to 1400 RPM. Because I looked at the specs of the Axminster drum sander, and for the size of drum they've got, 127 millimeter, they're running at 1400 RPM. So I figured that that's what I need to aim at. I haven't plugged this motor in yet. <laughs> don't actually know. I, I was told it worked. It has a mains plug on it, on its tiny little flex which will need replacing. So let's plug this in and see whether it actually works. I genuinely have never plugged this in. Uh, I don't know whether it's dodgy plugging a motor in that isn't uh, held down, but it's quite heavy. It doesn't seem to want to move. Mm. <laughs> let's do it. Hmm, <laughs> is this dodgy? Am I going to blow myself up? Smooth, smooth as silk. That's lovely. That is a quality motor. Oh, I'm very pleased about that. Yeah, there's some sort of break or something jumping as you plug it in, but once it's going, smooth as silk. Takes a while to run down. That's all right. This is a one inch Forstner bit. Took some finding. Around here they're all 25 millimeter. Or people will sell you a 25 millimeter and tell you it's a one inch, which isn't the case. I'm just gonna drill a test piece just to see how easily it fits on the axle because I think this is gonna be really tight, which is a good thing, as long as it's not too tight.
here's my jig. I've uh, I've got this set to 128 millimeters diameter. This should be bigger than 128. I may have to wind the cutter into the work each time because the disc is wider than 128 and I may have to wind it up against the work and it's not an end mill but hopefully it should it should be okay. This is screwed onto here, this, this won't move and uh, the disc pivots around it. Let's see how it goes. Got a slight flat spot here, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna move it in very slightly. I was aiming for 127 millimeters as the final diameter. I suspect this is going to be 127 millimeters as its initial diameter before final truing. But I'm hoping that this is going to be pretty close to true when we're finished. All these rather complicated markings are for quadrants or flattened quadrants on four edges or four quarters so that I can clamp the sandpaper in and it's best really if I just get on with it and I can show you later. And then there's some extra markings, this diagonal here which is where the bolts that are going to hold the, the discs on. The, this is one of the end discs and I'm going to do another one. This has taken me an absolute age to set up. I think it's taken me nearly an hour. But I've now got a jig where I've got enough room to change the drill bits. I, I couldn't use the platform of the pillar drill because it won't go low enough. It only just won't go low enough. But now I've got, I can slot this in and get every, every one in exactly the same place and I can drill all the holes I need. So first of all, I drill an eight millimeter hole for a threaded insert.
I'm going to swap out the drill bit. In reality, I can probably do all of the 8mm holes at the same time, I suspect, but let's see, I was hoping to, because I've got the jig, I, I don't need to have the holes individually lined up, if that makes sense. They should all line up independently. Put this back in, but we put in the insert that we drilled out. And go again. So I now apply a clamp just so we don't split the plywood. insert in and I hope this is going to screw in slipping a little bit. Yeah, that's okay though. So now the idea is that that pops back in and the sandpaper should get gripped in the gap. I possibly may have to shave some off the bottom there just to make it fit tighter. But the And I will need to countersink this hole. screws in. Oh. <laughs> well it will screw in when the uh, when the hole's countersunk. Hmm. <laughs> I might have to make sure. Oh that'll be alright. Just do these to start with and that give me a firm base to put the others on. These are not moving. Right, I'll leave those overnight. Do the rest tomorrow.
Yeah. This bit is so fiddly. some cross threading <laughs> oh come on there we go I was getting that cross threaded Lovely. Anybody fancy a doner kebab? It's quite heavy this. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It's very true and pretty much is at the dimension that I need it to be. I think there will only be a sanding. I was originally going to run the router over it as part of the trimming process. I might still do that but I think we can probably get there with the sanding. It's only half a millimetre off the 127 millimeters I was aiming for. In, in case you're wondering why 127 millimeters, I'm wondering that a bit too, but it's the dimension, it's the diameter of the jet sander that I was basing this on. Uh, I originally said Axminster, Axminster sell them, it, it, it's by jet. This is a little bit narrower, this is 50 centimeters, whereas the jet is 56 centimeters. So even though I'm matching the diameter, I'd still have to cut any sandpaper down that I get from them, but you know, I don't know how close the fit would be anyway if I bought their, their sandpaper. I think it's going to be easy to do my own, just get a roll of cloth back sandpaper and use that. I'm really pleased with how the engineering went. The tolerances on this are incredibly close. I'm going to have fun as the next step trying to get this into the bearings because this measures at I think 25.3, just a fraction under an inch, and the bearings measure as 25.3 as well. And I, I don't think they're going to slide on. I'm going to have to sand something down, whether it's the inside of the bearing or this. Maybe if I just clean it up with a little bit wet and dry, I'll be able to get them on. But I want a close fit anyway. But that's for the next video. I think there will probably be two more videos on this. There's still a lot of construction to do, but I'm, I'm really pleased. That I think that is probably the most difficult bit finished. So do the usual things, click like, subscribe so you don't miss the following videos and share the video around and we'll see you again. Bye.